Hey guys, <clears throat> can you hear me? Let me see, I got this set up. I was able to hear you, Nanette. I, I'm trying to set this up so I can see who's on here. I don't... Hello. Hey, how are you, Mike? Doing great. How about yourself? Good. Amy? Hi, I'm here. Good. Oh, my sidebar is not showing up. Why is that? I don't want that. I, um, I don't understand it. And sometimes it does what it wants, you know? <laughs> How's everybody? I could be warmer. I know, I'm freezing. I, I have a foot I, warmer. That's kind of nice. It was, war it was warm today because I have, to, on Tuesdays, I have to pick up the dog poop. <laughs> so it was like, <laughs> it, was, it was cold, but it wasn't that bad. But I just went out now and it's freezing out there. Oh, there's Amy. I see your face. Oh, hi, Dick. You got on, I see. I don't have a phone number for you. Dick, I don't have your phone number, so I couldn't send you a text message. I don't know what my phone has to do with a text message. Texts are in computers. But I finally <laughs> figured it out. Oh, good. Okay. I'm very slow. Well, usually we, you know, you text to a phone number. Oh no, I thought. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. I don't, I've never texted, whatever that means. Oh, okay, <laughs> I didn't think so because I would have had your number already. But um, I so I sent it in the email. 
I see you got it, so that's good. Good. I'll give a few more minutes for a couple more people to arrive. How was everybody's holiday? Good. Very good. Holiday? Yeah. You went somewhere. You were, where were you? Who? You, you went on a vacation or something? Who? Me? So, Kim. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we just went um, up upstate New York oh. for a little bit. Yeah, to um, Lake Did Placid. You go Did yeah. you go skiing? No, no. It actually wasn't was the best weather. Skiing off that thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you saw that. Yeah. I can't even imagine. <laughs> actually, it was trials for the Olympic when we were there. Up there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They still use that facility? Yes, they do. I was I was quite shocked myself. We just, you know, went on a whim. How about that? Yeah. yeah. It was well, pretty interesting and, and quite scary to just to look just at to look at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey Jody. Jody's on. Hey Jody. How are you? Good. Can you hear me okay? I'm yeah. There's like 20 million things going on in my house, so I tried to put my headphones on, so hopefully not too bad. Well, I got done early. All I have is the dog to feed, and uh, <laughs> I, I fed myself. <laughs> so I'm good. I wanted to wait for a couple more people. I think okay. she said she was coming. Okay. I not lie. Hi, Jody. Hi, how are you? All right. All right, well, let's get started. Um, if Hazel pops on, we'll just say hello. Um, I sent out the agenda, it changed a little bit, but not much. Um, I just wanted to talk about the um, two grants. I was going to, we were going to apply for three grants, but um, we're going to apply for, I think, two, and I'll explain the reason why. Um, the first we're, one we're going to apply for is a PSE and G grant for $10,000. And we, what we would like to do is, if it's granted, is upgrade um, council chambers to include new microphones, uh, video equipment, and maybe a new uh, monitor for the wall. So that, um, I don't know if you, you guys attend meetings, but it's very difficult to hear what's being said, um, especially when the professionals speak to the council, they're looking in the opposite direction and the, the computer that's recording is, is not picking up what they're saying. And I, I feel bad that I have to constantly ask what would you do, <laughs> you know, after, after it was done. So um, that's going to be our first grant, uh, but there are sustainable Jersey actions that uh, are included in that. And that's something that we need to work through Jody with uh, and, and Kim with the council and council president. Uh, and that would be to do the, the actions that are listed in the uh, sustainable Jersey um, action called uh, improving pu public engagement in, in municipal government. And some of those actions include, you know, notifying the public when meetings are going to be held, which they ought to, they already do this stuff, but unless you're already on the email list, there's no way for you to get an agenda ahead of time. So they suggest maybe putting up a sign up right on the front page of the website for people to sign up to get email notifications of meetings and things like that. So that's one thing that could be done. Um, other things that could be done is to um, establish rules, rules for people to speak at meetings. Right now, they, they have public comment se sections, but they don't have a time limit on how, how long a person could speak and um, no clear instructions on the agenda about how to go about speaking. and with more and more Zoom meetings, you know, it's kind of confusing uh, who's going to speak next and so forth. So one, I know, 
the towns I cover have really long agendas. They're a couple pages long, but they have a um, public comment statement up at the at the head of the agenda, and they have a, a specific instructions on how long you can speak and so forth. So that's something that could be suggested to the, that the council do. Um, what are some of the other things? Um, Annette, don't they have the public comment suggestion at the yes. beginning as well as at the end? Yeah, but it's like stuck in the middle. It's right. It's right at the head of the meeting before all the uh, professionals speak. So if you had a question on something that was discussed, and they're like that's how the um, um, the the um, um, the re redevelopment plan got approved. It was, it was they passed the resolution verbally, and when the the uh, engineer was speaking, and the, that was there was no public comment available for that. So I, I think the agenda might need to be adjusted on where that first public comment session is. Uh, well, another thing that I could suggest too, that all three of my towns that I cover right now do, or they have, they have two meetings. They start their meeting at a reasonable time. I, well, they're early, they're like four o'clock or 5.30, they're really early. Uh, which is good for me because I'm home early, but um, they start their meeting and then they have their, what they call a work session where they, they review the, what's, go, what's on the agenda they, and they, they hear from all their professionals and department heads. And then they have public com comment on what, what everyone heard. And then they open their regular meeting. They close that meeting and they open their regular meeting where everything's already printed on the agenda, ordinances and things like that. And they give the public an opportunity to speak again at the head of the meeting. And one of one of town actually has a, a third public comment at the end of the meeting for general comments on anything you wanna talk about. So there's, there's suggestions, there's a whole list of items included in that in the action plan that could be looked at. Um, find it. I know that that public comment section at the beginning of the meeting that was added because people wanted to be able to comment on stuff that was on the agenda. Yeah. Before it was uh, discussed. That because it used sense. to just be. It used to just be the public comment at the very end of the meeting, like after everything was already right. done. Right. So they, that, they made that, the second. That's, an, that's a big improvement, you know? Yeah. Um, so, Nanette, you're saying it should be after all of the professionals speak? Well, that's what the other towns do. I mean, okay. they can do it whenever they want, but I think the agenda could be reworked a little bit. But, you know, that's not, not my decision. That's not our decision. That's, up, I, I guess, up to the council president how he wants to run his meetings. Not so, to interject, my thought is why it's at the spot it is, is that if someone's coming to a council meeting to address council about something, they don't have to sit through all these reports and all the, you know, I mean, sometimes the meeting is like an hour long by the time we get through the professional reports. Now someone's had, you know, sat there for an hour versus if we just kind of say, okay, the beginning of the meeting, does anyone have anything they want to say basically before the meetings even started? And then, well, you know, people have a chance again. I mean, there's public, I mean, personally, I don't think we're not giving the public a chance to speak in my personal opinion. I mean, no, this is I'm just my personal That's yeah. not what I'm saying. I'm saying yeah, that I know. if we want to get this grant, we got to do gotcha. this other stuff too. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's like, they're just not going to give you the money. To right, no, I agree. Um, right. Um, uh, but the, the um, uh, at the head of the council meeting, it's for agenda items only, that first thing. So if it's not on the agenda, you can't speak on it. That's how the redevelopment plan was approved. And of course I got upset and then everybody else got upset. And uh, so having that first public comment after all, everybody makes their reports might be a better time to do it because you could, you could comment on what you heard you know, because things, you know, council meetings are, they're like action meetings. They're, they're discussing what they're going to do or what they need to do. Uh, and people should, that's when people should, I, my personal opinion, that's when people should be given their input because you don't want to, you don't want them to take action on stuff that you have concerns about and then not be able to have any, you know, I mean, I'm a citizen. I want to be able to speak and, and, 
voice my opinion on where I think the city should go or if it's a good idea or not, you know, but you don't always get that opportunity the way that agenda is, is done now. So they could look at that. Some of, um, there's a whole list of actions that they suggest that, that other towns are doing such as, um, I do talked about the rules for citizen input, the agendas, you know, we already record our meetings and post them. Um, something I I would like to see done with the website is, it's because the website, the way it's designed is really just a blog on the front page. It's really chronological. It's like the latest thing that's posted is, is up at the top and the other things that were posted three weeks ago, you have to go through pages and pages of stuff to find. So if there could be on the, on the left-hand side where the tabs are, uh, one for resolutions and one for ordinances where they'll be there and they'll be, they'll be listed so that if anybody's interested in seeing a resolution that was passed, all they have to do is click on that one thing and the resolutions will be listed chronologically on a blog, you know, at time thing um, on, on that. Um, they talk about doing more um, conversations on social media, but, you know, I, I think Meg is a, has a pretty good handle on answering questions when there's postings on the city's Facebook page. I think there's more people monitoring that page now than in the past. So, uh, maybe that could be put into some kind of a resolution or something. Um, uh, collaborating between boards, which is kind of a little bit touchy with plant, uh, with the land use board because they're supposed to be separate, but you know, the, the, you know, how about code enforcement? How about the green team? You know, we don't get an opportunity to collaborate. I mean, I go to the meetings and give small reports or, let them know what we're up to. But um, at the last meeting, I requested that they um, provide, add us to their list of committees and give us a, a liaison, a council person who will come to the meetings and stay abreast of what we're doing and be able to report uh, back to the council on policies that we're talking about and things like that. Um, and what, what was the one? Nanette, excuse me, Nanette. I, yeah. I did um, say that I would do that since I come to these meetings anyway. Oh, good. No, I, I oh, said good. I would do that. Okay. If we could get one other, that would be great, you know. Um, uh, so that's, that's what that one grant is for. I think it would be um, a, a fabulous grant if we got, if got approved for it. Uh, now, the, uh, the other grant that we wanted to apply for, these are the Sustainable Jersey grants, the PSE and G grants, um, was the $2,000 operating budget grant. Now, we've applied for that grant every year for the last four, four years, and we haven't gotten it. I was going to apply for it again and, you know, use it for the same things that, that we've been asking money for, printing and refreshments and little, little things that we need. But I'm afraid that if this PS $10,000 grant application, I think is pretty strong because it's kind of out of the box. I don't, I don't think anybody's asked for something like that before. And that's what they're looking for. They're looking for things that are different. Uh, they encourage, encourage you to think outside the box. So I'm afraid that if we apply for both of them and you can't get to, you can only get one, that we might get the $2,000 grant, not the $10,000 grant. So I'm thinking we should not even bother applying for the $2,000 grant this year and just struggle through the year with no money like we've been doing for the last four years. <laughs> Jody always manages to come up with a couple hundred dollars here and there. <laughs> I was going to say, if it's something, you know, little things here and there, we usually can manage. And, you know, I was, you know, if it was something larger, maybe we could, you know, get maybe like some sponsors or something you know maybe some of the businesses if there was something larger that we decided we wanted to do or some kind of larger giveaway we could always you know put someone's name on something and have it sponsored yeah. by them you know and we always have clean communities and recycling tonnage monies for you know certain things that we can kind of too much recycling tonnage money this year and then there's a third grant uh, well it's actually it's more like a process than a grant. Um, 
you, you, we have we need to submit our interest in obtaining the, this funding, but because we're considered a distressed community in the state, we're eligible to apply for $25,000, which uh, would be a great thing to have. And it's for a um, energy planning grant. It's an energy planning grant. It's, it's to be used to plan for future energy projects that'll reduce costs, um, you know, reach out to the community and things like that. So, um, Jody, did you did you start that checklist? It's a two step process. First, yep. you submit your interest and a checklist of items that you're going to go look at, uh, and then this, if you get the twenty five thousand dollars, then you go through this planning process, which could take a year or so to to complete. So. I, I have not started yet, to be honest. And I was kind of saying to Ryan the other day, like, I wish that, I mean, it's a lot of money, which is nice, but it's like, we need implement, the, you know, it can't be used towards implementation, which is what's going to be difficult. That's really, you know, where we're going to need the money for, you know, implementation. So I'm going to try to take a look um, at the actions and see, like, like you said, like, what is really feasible, or at least what could we what could we truly see us getting future grants maybe to help with, you know, what are some projects maybe that we either already have in the works or things that we've wanted to do anyway, and just have to, you know, really figure out a way to try to actually get them done. Like we've talked about the LED, I don't even know if this is one of the items, but just something no, I, I, I definitely include that is the LED, you know, street lights. It's something we've wanted to do. And, um, when I talked to the guy from Sustainable Jersey last week about it, he said he thinks Atlantic City Electric is really working to try to do that anyway, and is they're kind of doing it. So I'm going to try to like get some more information. I know years ago when we looked at it, they weren't, you know, we would have to pay to, to retro if it wasn't kind of on a one by one kind of basis or a new light or whatever. But I haven't looked at it in a couple of years. So, you know, something to look at again and a lot of times if there's certain clean energy programs, sometimes it completely excludes lights and sometimes it doesn't. So just, yeah. you know, the programs change all the time. So it's really just kind of looking around again and seeing, you know, is there something that we could use for this? Or at least well, could we could we fund it over so many years and make it, you know, now that we'll have this plan, you know, taking the time to plan it out. Like we've never really had the time, but if we're gonna have money to pay a professional to plan it out, then we can come up with a real plan. You know, it's one of those things that always gets put because like the only person that's really going to do it is me. But if I can pay the engineer to do it, then, okay, great. We can come up with like a real plan for it. So yeah, that's, that's my what thought. I think. And, but some of it, like uh, your email, the response that you got from the sustainable, Jer sustainable Jersey fellow was that you, m you could pay an engineer to do the plan, right? but save some money for imp like, reaching out into the community and educating the public because we did those we did some of these actions already years ago uh with the, the home energy program that we right, did exactly like so that. kind of like reaching out again and like Do basically just keep it going you know reach right. new people new residents or people you didn't reach the first time right so exactly yeah. and i like i like the idea of led street lights because i think it would save the city a lot of money and it would create a safer community because right. i think they're a little bit brighter um, and, and it's something council has so, been wanting to do for years. So I feel, you know, you want things that people are going to be supportive of yeah. too. And, you know. But now when I listen to that second webinar, when it comes time to filling out the plan, and it's a very simple thing, we could, we could probably do it ourselves, right. but the, and, and the sustainable Jersey folks said that they have a, um, they have a lot of data set aside in a database where we could just push punch in a Harbor city and it'll okay. give us all the data. Plus okay. we have what that, uh, fe that fellow did last summer. Mm -hmm. We have that information, which was minimal, but it, it shows you where you should go. I right. mean, we don't have right. that many buildings. It's, it's not like right. we, have, we have city hall and you know, you have the chiller thing and you, there's, there's a lot, lot, I think that could be done. And this, you know, when I approach these things, I don't think of, oh, well, we'll never be able to do that. Let's not put it in. You can't, you can't let the money stop you from setting goals. That's my opinion. It's like, 
reach for the stars, you just might get the moon. You know what I mean? And so I wouldn't, I, they want to see you fill in all the boxes in that plan. And if, you, if you're not going to achieve, do it at all, then you have to explain why they said that you're not going, you can't do that or why it's just not achievable in your town. And, you know, they realize that we're a small town and we're a distressed community too. So they want to give you the money. Right. And the other thing too, I, I think that we have to consider is there's a lot of money out there. And I, I see it every day come across my desk. These towns are getting money to do this and that. And there's going to be even more money once that um, um, infrastructure. infrastructure money comes through. And they're already starting to prep everybody for that. That's why they're doing these things at Sustainable Jersey and helping the utility companies spend their money because that's where all this money comes from. It comes from PSE&G, Atlantic right. City Electric, because they are required by law to reduce energy costs by a certain percentage by 2030, 2050 or whatever. And the only way they're gonna do that is if the towns that they're serving get some money to implement these programs. So right. I'm real hopeful at, at, with, with this grant. I think we'll, we could probably get it. And the other, the two grants, I mean, they're, they're both good grants, the energy planning grant and the um, uh, public engagement grant. I think they're both really good grants. and. Uh, they're coming from two different sources so i think we could get both I, we might be able to get both but i, I didn't want to put that third grant in there like, right. you know um could i have just you, on, sorry on the leds for a moment i spoke with gary hess you know he was a longtime employee at um for the electric company and i had asked him about the lights uh, a couple of weeks ago and i mean i know he's retired now but he was telling me that they replace them. However, they replace them when, it's not when a light bulb burns burns out. It's when a, I don't, for lack of a better word, transformer, something within it burns out is when they do that. And that doesn't burn out all that often, he right. said. So when they replace the lights, they're not replacing you know, them. So unless it changed since he's been retired, that's what they were doing. So I'm no, sure it's we tell so we tell the electric company that's what we want to do and that's we're we're working on this plan and we we need your assistance and they could bring down the costs they could put us on a, a no interest loan I mean there's you don't know it's out there there's money out there and by the way I have a transformer at the back of my house I could go up there and jiggle it if you want there you go <laughs> I don't know if it's a transformer but something in there. But I, oh, I'm not trying to mix this. I'm just trying to say, no, Jody. No, you, I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure that's probably not is any different now. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm saying. I don't. In the past, they never were like you know they weren't just going to come in and redo every light in the city. Right. But you know, for once, if we did a new light or for certain reasons, they would you know replace the light or whatever. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was told. So yeah. that's what uh, we're working on. That's kind of taken up a lot of time. Um, Real quick, Minette. Um, yes. I know we're waiting for the engineers to really move forward with being able to order the actual signs. But have we? Have you? I think you were trying to get quotes for the signs. So at least once we get the information from Karen, or we'll be able to order the signs. Yeah, I don't Not think yet. getting the signs is a problem. I did contact okay. another company. I contacted okay. two companies back in October and they, yeah 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 they said you know we could we could do that no problem and they gave me really good price it was that's why we applied for the amount of money that we applied for I think it was 2,500 and they gave us 5,000 okay uh, so I, then I the other day I I was on Facebook and I saw this sign it's exactly what we want and it was a company an advertisement from a company in Pennsylvania and oh I, really I contacted them and they sent me some information um, and they, they said that they gave me a price for doing the artwork too. And I was like, no, that's too much money, $1,200 just for the artwork. But um, their signs were smaller than what we need. They, they were really like, like a half a page, like that size. That, that's not gonna work in the park. We need, we need something maybe this size. Okay. for people to, to see it so I don't where know where did you say you saw a sample 
I, I have to, I have an email somewhere. Where did, um, I didn't print it out. Did I print it out? Here it is. I got all these files. I went through all my papers and separated all the pages <laughs> instead of leaving them in a pile. Now I can't find anything. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not here. That's the wrong file. All right. Well, it's in my email. Uh, okay. And it, it was a lot of money. It was way more than I think we wanted to spend. Although their their signs were beautiful, um, the other the other two guys I talked to, you know, they were just saying it off the top of their head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could do that, but I didn't see their product. You know, okay. I didn't have to get an actual. I think we did get one quote um, that met the two twenty five hundred that we were looking to spend, but. We, we have a little flexibility there because they gave us more money than we asked for. So, um, but th the problem that, I, you know, I had all of December when I had nothing to do and all of January when I had COVID that I could have got all this stuff done and we still don't have anything from the engineers. Like I haven't yeah. heard anything from them. Yeah, I'm gonna. I emailed them yet last week, and they said they were working on. I'm gonna try to follow up with them again. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I need. I don't know if Karen could confirm. Dick's, Dick Colby uh, had identified the trees. I asked her to confirm, but I don't know if she could do that now because it's all the leaves are right. The right, that's a good point. So, you know, and when are the leaves going to come back? It won't be until. April, May, and we want to get this project finished by April, the end of April for Arbor Day. So, you know, I, I just, I, I'm, and I'm already starting to get busy or at work, which, you know, that saps all my creative time in the morning when I have to write stories. And I last night attending a four hour planning board meeting oh on Zoom, God. I was like, oh God, I, I was like falling asleep. So I'm getting busy. And, and the other thing, the, that was for the labeling of the trees, talking about the signage. And then there's the fall tree planting, which is a lot of back and forth with residents that, you know, we, we need to get a letter out to them. We need to provide them with the list of trees that will be acceptable. And then we have to, you know, find a vendor who's gonna do the installation. We have to find the trees. So that's a lot of legwork on your end doing doing the, um, the contracts and stuff. So I don't want to get stuck. I mean, doing this next spring when we could, we, we really told them we wanted to get it done in fall, which is a better time to plant anyway. So if you could put a little spark yeah, yeah. on Ryan and Karen um, to get us the information that we need so we could get going on it. Nanette, I just wanted to say one thing about the trees. I mean, do you have pictures? Because I have some pictures of the trees. Maybe they can go off of that as well that have yeah. leaves on them. If you have pictures, that would be great. Yeah, Send me I what do. you have. I will. Uh, because we have yeah, that one actually, tree. Actually, remember? I have a ton of pictures too from when we had to um, submit for the grant reimbursement because of COVID, they couldn't come out and do a live inspection. So we, Dick went and took a lot of pictures of like a hundred. He was super helpful. He took like, Dick, you took like a hundred pictures, I would say. It, so of, the new I trees. Have, of the new trees yeah so any of the newer trees i have pictures of those as well okay i mean good but, luck i mean but, i have them kind of labeled as best we could so i could send you you know a certain one if you're looking for it well we have karen's list of trees that were planted okay. there so that's that that's that would be in addition to the big trees it's the big trees yeah. there that dick did dick went out there and and did a rudimentary map okay uh, but you know, I'm, I, I'm not sure. I, I don't, right. I can't tell one tree for another, except for that one beautiful tree. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, that was gorgeous. That tree yeah. it was like, oh, that's what, it, that's where, how I got this idea to do this. It was like, everybody should know what type of tree that is. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's really so, big. It's a tulip poplar. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was the, what was it? Do you remember what it was, Kim? Yeah. Uh, London, Linden, Linden. Uh, Linden. Linden. Okay. Linden. Yeah. And they that makes honey. Lind, that, linden trees make honey, don't they? There's linden. No, 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 they don't no, make honey. I'm not sure. But they do make blossoms, which is 
used by in Germany as a as an herbal tea. Lindenblüten. Yeah. So, um, so that's the the issue. The, the first two and three on the agenda. Um, any suggestions? Any help people can offer? One of the um, one of the items for the uh, the tree grant, the tree planting grant, and we had I had did I discuss this with you, Mike? is getting Dick Colby's database and transferring it to iTree. Yeah, you sent me that file. I'm not too familiar with iTree, but I do have a lot of database experience. So um, I could help if, if I, I'm guessing I would need some sort of login and I'm not sure exactly what the task would be out to just uploading the data into um, the yes. iTree database. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I, you'd have to find iTree. It's an online, I don't know if it's an app now or if it's something you have to download to your computer to use. I think okay. it's an app. I think it's something where the DEP has control of New Jersey's trees. So when anybody puts information in there, it goes into that iTree database, which can be used by all types of organizations like the DEP and and is there anything in there today? Does a Harbor City have, is that file you sent me, is any of that already in iTree or is the hot, the entire file? No, no. And that's the, the thing is that they, all of these grants and the state and all, they want you to use this iTree program. And Dick's got a great, his, his database has got all the information. He's even got GPS on there, I think, don't you? Yeah, it's, a, it's not for cool. everything, but yes. So it, it's got a lot of information in there and it's just, I don't know, and I don't have the time to figure out how to upload it to this okay. iTree, but that's that's the program that everybody wants you to use when you're dealing with- I visited with the website. I didn't see anything too much about a download, but I will look into that. If if possible, what I could do, depending on what iTree's, um, how you connect to their database. I, I have SQL on my computer at home. I could load the Excel file in the SQL and then from there, it can probably be imported into the database pretty easily. Um, there could be a lot of like uh, upload errors and things like that if there's carriage returns and the data and things along that, but that's pretty easily fixable. So now knowing that you, you haven't done anything at all with iTree, it's pretty much no. that file needs to I, get You know, I, so I had it downloaded priority. years ago, like five years ago, I had it on my home computer and I started to play with it, but it's just too complicated and you know, I, I'm too busy to, to figure it out on my own. Okay. Um, you know, I, I had talked to some students at Stockton that said, oh, yeah, we know that program. We can help you. And then I never heard from them again. Hmm. So, but if, if that, because he, 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 Dick goes, walks the entire city at least once a year and makes all those notations on the condition of the tree and what the species is. Um, I also have a document in this pile of stuff <laughs> that tells you how to actually identify the trees and um, how to measure them and so forth. So nice. the circumference or the diameter or whatever, I don't know. So um, if, if you could look at, just look into it and let, let me know if it's something that is doable or not. Yeah, sure. I'll see what I can get with on my own. And um I'll see if they have like a contact to reach out for help. And if I can't get anything there, maybe you can connect me with those Stockton um, contacts you have and maybe they can pull me in the right direction too. But now knowing that there's been nothing uploaded at all, there's no account, it's pretty much um, you know, it's a fresh account on for Egg Harbor City. I'll, I'll see what I can get, get done there. We've used that document to get these tree grants. When we, when we apply for them, we, we include that document, that Excel spreadsheet. And, and is it pretty yeah. much for any tree document to be documented or is it really you just try to pick for ones that are kind of special or you know large trees things of that nature no we're looking mainly for street trees i mean okay. here's we got tons of trees in the woods we don't, mm -hmm. we're not interested in in documenting that or anything we're forest trees but just our we're the, the main part of town um where the street trees the old street trees are um, and, you know, if somebody adds a tree, like there's two trees on Cincinnati Avenue that when they did the street, the road program there, the woman who lived in the house said, you're not cutting down my trees. I just planted them and they are gorgeous, gorgeous trees. They're um, Zelkovas 
and they have small leaves, so they're not real messy in the fall. I mean, they're not like leaves this big, they're only leaves that big. And then the other day I saw a, a, a document that had um, uh, invasive species list and they listed the Zelkova as an emerging invasive species. And I'm like, geez, what? <laughs> I cannot pick street trees. So um, That's cool. I, I want Zelkovas planted. I don't care if they're emerging or not. <laughs> they're gorgeous trees. They're, they're nicely shaped. They make great shade. And um, I hope and hope and the Karen puts that on the approved tree streets. Uh, I know the state, they also manage a list of champion trees for each species. So like you, they don't tell you exactly where it's at, but you can like see that, like, for example, the biggest white cedar tree in the state is 93 uh, inches in circumference or something like that. And that's pretty cool too. I don't know if anyone's ever tried to compare some of Egg Harbor City's bigger trees to the New Jersey listing of, of like largest trees in the state. I, I sometimes just like to check that out just for fun. You know, there's like the black gum trees down all the way out in Cumberland County. There's some huge ones down there. So that's pretty neat too. So maybe I can dig into that as well and just yeah, see, sure. uh, you know, sure. some of our bigger trees compared to what they have on their site. So that's, that's, that's something neat to have as well. Yeah. Well, I think most of our street trees were planted about a hundred years ago, 80 <laughs> years ago, a hundred years ago. So I don't think any of the street trees are that old. I know there was one tree on private property that was pretty, pretty old. And that was torn down a couple of years ago, which caused an uproar in the community because they're like, why'd you take that tree down, you know? Um, and, and I, you know, I'm a tree advocate, but I, I'm realistic in knowing that they, they need to be come down sometimes and need, to, but they, my big thing is they need to be replaced if they come down, that we should have a, we, we adopted a tree cover goal um, a couple of years ago that we want no net loss on street trees. And of course we lost a lot of them from road programs, which is why we got this grant to replant some of them. So uh, I'm concerned because uh, that's probably one of the biggest assets of the city. Um, I know I live here. I love living here. I hate living here. I love living here. <laughs> I hate living here. You know, I, it, it's been like that for 40 years now. <laughs> but the trees are, are special. And when you talk to people from other parts of South Jersey, they know Egg Harbor because of its, their street trees and the way the streets are laid out. So I'm real proud of it. I want to keep them. So <laughs> anyway. Um, the next item here, if we move on a little bit to um, item four is the 2020 actions. I'm not gonna go over this right now because these are all little programs that we had started that we, we didn't finish. I, uh, Jody, if you look at section A on the agenda, it, it's these are things that we submitted for points for that need to be updated. Um, I don't know if the community gardens action item, community education and outreach, anti-idling and bicycle and pedestrian improvement projects. We, we had submitted for points, but they marked them incomplete. So I don't know, I know we did one and submitted it and that jacked us up to 210 points, but I can't remember what it was for. Do you remember what that was which for? Ones, what, which ones I updated? The one, the one I added more information to oh. one of the action items and resubmitted it and they sent us back another notice saying that we didn't have 180 points, we had 210 points. Yeah, I updated a couple actions. Oh my God, I can't remember which ones I updated now. Well, um, when you look at the agenda, let me know which ones are on here. Oh, okay. It was, so I think I it was the community off. garden probably. Okay. I think I just took out, I think I just had to take out like, um, we had like given some stuff to like Rittenberg, but it wasn't like enough. We didn't have like formal documentation and all this stuff. So I think like the extra five points for that, I was like, well, I just won't worry about that. It was like enough without it. So I think it was the community gardens and- Community education and outreach. Um, I'll have to double check our application. Yeah. I can't remember. It was either the community education and outreach I think maybe, and possibly the anti idol It definitely wasn't the bicycle and pedestrian because we can't do that until we actually finish the grant and that's going to be a long time. So right. it definitely wasn't that. Um, what, what's going on with that? Any? Can you shed light on that? What's taking so long? 
I think we're just waiting for the like state right now. I think they're like reviewing everything if I'm correct. But like most of the, de the designs being finalized, I think that are like wrapping up the final design piece. That's for the bike path going out. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> and then incomplete planned actions were the pet parenting program, which I'd still like to do. Uh, the solar project, which is ongoing, right? Any progress on that, do you know? Um, yeah, actually, I asked Ryan about that at the last council meeting, and he said they have to, unless it gets extended, the project has to be completed by September, I think, 30th or September, a, a date in September. So unless the state or whatever program that they're um, doing this through gets extended, it should be complete by September. And that's fully funded or that's no cost to the city? Yeah, I don't believe it's any cost to the city. Well, that would be great. And that will go into that other grant, uh, the uh, energy planning grant. Oh yeah, good point. And the call, we should know that uh, community solar is one of the one of the actions they want you to tackle. So. I will say more. <laughs> and the mayor's well. Actually, oh sorry. The um just but real quick about that community solar. I'm supposed to maybe listen in for actually I'm on Linwood's green team and we're like looking into that just to get information on it. So I thought it would be nice. I could kind of listen for, you know, that and kind of for us also. So I'll, I'll, I'll report back once I actually do the um, call should be sometime in the next week or two, I think. And then the, the one item there is the mayor's wellness campaign, East West walk route, which I had I've been conversing back and forth with the, uh, um, Keith, and I sent him some information, but I don't know if it ever got done. And that's where we're going to just mark the street with the um, um, mile markers. He's going to paint mile, mile quarter mile oh, okay. increments on, um, I think, Claudius or Camp Street. And we have a, like an alternate route that goes around so people can go over the footbridge. It's a really nice, it's a nice idea. And, you know, I, I used to walk back there all the time and it's quiet and peaceful and it goes past Peace Broken Park and through by the schools and over the bridge. And it would be a nice thing to have and, and to promote that, you know, if people want to go out for some exercise or walk their dog and it's a two mile route. So, you know, it's good exercise. So that's part of I don't know what the status is with that. I, I guess I'd have to check with Keith um, or the mayor. I can't see, is she here? She said she was coming because she's up next. Are you there? There she is. You listening? I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> okay. Um, and at the last week's meeting, um, Mayor Jean Petty gave the council a the results of a survey that was done two years ago and following the um, um, the lake prop problem that we had, we went through last month in, in December. Uh, this the council talked about doing some strategic planning. So, Mayor, you want to talk about that a little bit? Sure. Um, first, I'll address the bike path that you were talking oh. about. Yeah, that that's waiting to be coordinated with the county in order to. Um, the county's going to replace that road, Route 50, and also the bridge work has to be done on the bridge. So that all has to be coordinated with the county time-wise before the construction actually starts on the bike path. How long is that going to take? Uh, it's 563. The... What? It's Route 563, not Route 50. Okay, well, Philadelphia Avenue, Route 563, whichever you'd like to call it, but the road that goes to the lake. Yes, um, 563. That is a county road, as we all know. So they're going to do the, um, they're going to do the, you know, paving and all that. So we, we want to coordinate it so that this way it saves some time. We don't have to redo it after the bike uh, lane is in. So... Is that on their a list of things to get uh, get done? I mean, yes. land. Oh, yes. Along with the bridge, has to be fixed. Oh, good. Bridge at the lakes. That's great. That's that. And then, as far as the walking route, he did say he got that done. I'm not sure if he got it 
labeled yet, but we did talk about that not very long ago, but I can follow up with him on that. Yeah. All right. Cool. I don't know um, if specifically mayor's wellness counts for any points or it was just the walking path that counts for points, but um, I did do another mayor's wellness with the um, house, the home decorating the lights. So that was a mayor, mayor wellness project. Uh -huh. So getting back to the um, planning, planning, uh, the, I did research in 2019 and my degree was not conferred until 2020. So that left 2021 to um, release the results to city council and get moving on possibly going to a strategic plan. Um, coming off of COVID, that was a little difficult. Also the changes in council and the things that were going on that were not, um, wasn't really a favorable environment to bring things like that up. So I feel like it's more of a favorable environment now since like you had said, Nanette, that they were very receptive to strategic planning. So basically the survey that I did was just the instrument that I used for my research, you know, um, and basically it showed that the people in the city would be favorable, I believe 88% of them, if my memory serves me correctly, 88% of them, I'm gonna bring it up right now, agree that a municipality could benefit from strategic planning. Now, there are larger municipalities that do do strategic planning and a plan can be as big and complicated as you'd like it to be. However, I don't believe that that's um, going to benefit Egg Harbor to do something like that, but, um, there's a lot of benefits that come from strategic planning. I'll give you an example, and which we all kind of are aware of as it is that maybe the citizens do not want to do roads and sidewalks and then cut down all the trees on the streets. So instead of city council endeavoring to do these projects, it would be good to know what the public thinks. You know what I mean? So that's kind of the premise of the strategic planning is just to find out what stakeholders value in a Harbor city. And obviously, you know, they do value trees and that's a, that's a good thing to consider as we go forth, you know, repaving roads and putting, you know, putting in sidewalks and things like that. So that's one of the things that we can accomplish by doing the strategic plan. So, uh do you have to redo that? Did you think about redoing that survey or? You, or well, that, that, that survey, to. the survey basically was just to, um, let me just, I'll just read what it's, what real quick. I know I, you didn't want me to go over the whole thing, but um, basically there's a, the problem of practice in a Harbor city is there that really has never been a strategic plan to guide and direct operations. Most um, large public, Organizations have strategic plans. They have a shared vision, a mission statement, and core values that really um, unite everyone under a common purpose. And we've never had that. We do have a master plan, which we all know. That is basically for land use. And most of you can incorporate those strategic pieces into the master plan. Um, a master plan is part of it, but it's not all of it. So. The, the purpose of that survey was to get information from the stakeholders pertaining specifically to strategic planning and what they value for strategic planning. So the, and, and also to identify our barriers to strategic planning. So that said, it would not really be, um, I mean, you, I could run it, run the whole survey again, but I don't think it would be beneficial, even though it was a snapshot from 2019. The purpose of the study was to get a pulse on what the people in Egg Harbor City actually felt about strategic planning, because it is a process and it's a, it's a pretty big endeavor. And if the people could care less about it, then, and they don't want to be involved or, you know, they don't care how we spend their money or whatever, then of course we wouldn't want to do it, you know? So, so the, I the think getting the public involved in planning 
right. would eliminate some of the negativity. Exactly. And I agree the community and get everybody working for the same goal. Like me personally, I always look to the future and I, I rarely look behind me. I'm always looking like, what am I going to do today or tomorrow? Right. That's just my nature to be that way. And I'm also good at like finding where, you know, that won't work. You're, that's, I don't think we should go in that direction. It's going to be a pitfall. I, I'm good at seeing that stuff in advance, right. but you know, people look at it sometimes and say, well, you're so negative, but I'm not, I'm really not. It's just that life, life experiences, you know, uh, living in a, in a certain community, you know, what works and what doesn't. And to be quite frank, I was a little surprised that so many people jumped on the um, the lake issue. I was really surprised about that because usually what happens is people complain and then they just forget about it and nobody does anything. And, and, and in this instance, they, they got involved and they got the result that they wanted, which is a good thing in a way. I mean, it's bad for the, the vendor, but you know, I, it's good for the community in, in the long run. So doing the strategic planning, I think if you could get people involved ahead of time, it gives you an idea of where you want to go and it kind of eliminates all that political nonsense that has no parts in a small town like ours. Right. And a and, uh, survey is a part of constructing a strategic plan, but the survey would be more focused on what they value. So if you had a question such as rate rank from one to five, how important uh, replacing sidewalks and roads are to you, you know, say they place that as one, like that would be information that you would use going forth. Like you have, to, we have to decide exactly what, you know, obviously a, a municipality provides services to people and we have to find out which services the people value the most and then go from there because that's just exactly what you were talking about, Nanette. You know, it's getting the people involved and saying, what, what do they value? And, you know, so the first two questions were basically of, of my research were what, you know, what value do you place on strategic planning and the benefits of strategic planning, which I went over. I'm not going to go over it again, but obviously there's a lot of benefits to it, according to the research. Um, and then what, you know, the same type of question, what what level of value do they put on, you know, coming up with a mission statement, a vision statement and core values. And then the last two questions were the same, except it was what, what do, what are the barriers you see in strategic planning? And that was very telling, which I went over a lot of their yeah, answers. That there. was, that was very good. It was and, hard to hear, but you know, no, it was, it was hard to hear. And um, among you know, this also, what, what do you see the barriers are to, to developing a shared mission vision and, and establishing values? So basically the survey was directed at those types of information, that type of information that I needed to complete my dissertation. So, but, um, so with that, you know, it's, it did clearly, the results clearly stated that they, clearly showed that they they would support a plan and that they want you know they want to go forward with doing that and you know you were at the meeting the net so basically um just a, just a few perceived barriers were basically 100 in each category um personal agendas of council people and you know that was a seen as barriers to strategic planning and also to um, developing those items for a strategic plan. So Lisa, that, can I interject for a second? Sure. I think, that, I think that's really uh, one of the best parts of the strategic plan to get all of us on the same page instead of everybody moving all different kind of moving parts. You know, you have right. all this way, everyone will be on the same page. You get input from the city first, then you sit down with, with all of us, you discuss it, then you start moving forward. What can we do? What's the most important thing? And then you just move forward from there. And I think it's, I think it's a great thing that you, you, know, you came up with. I think it's wonderful. Thank you, Kim. And then the second uh, largest 
barrier they perceived was poor relationships among council people, which, you know, collaborating in strategic planning, you know, th that is one of the benefits of strategic planning. Um, the open end. I wanted to say um, when I, I when I was covering Hamilton Township, I attended there. Harvey Kesselman did it. Yeah, for Harvey Hamilton Harvey Township, mm -hmm. and he did a SWOT analysis and things like that. And I attended it. It was very very good. And you know, some of the thing was so elementary. It's like yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> duh. But okay. have it written down and put it on a piece of paper and saying this is going to be a goal and this is this this is what our community is. It was really valuable. And I don't know I, if they ever completed the strategic plan, but um, Harvey was a, a council person at the time. Uh, and so that's when I got to know him really well, <laughs> you know, right. because he was very animated. And I was also involved in when I was with the uh, Education Foundation, when we did our uh, Good Schools Equal Strong Communities Educational Summit. When we, we had the community come forth and we had 40 people engaged, we hired somebody to run the meetings and to take all the information down and everything. And as a result of that, we have a high school and a, a new Rittenberg, or I mean a new community school to replace yeah. Rittenberg. Because that was that was the that's where everything was leading to is that our schools are inadequate. It's not the teaching staff, it's not the curriculum, it's the building. We right. need a new building. Our kids can't learn in this environment. And that's how the uh, Replace in Rittenberg came to the forefront. And right. we were very lucky because the, all of this information was compiled in a document, was given to the school board. And Maggie Damber was the school board president at the time. And she made sure that the school board got involved in it and it saw the, saw the implementation. And that's when we hired John Gilly because he attended those meetings on behalf of Apsagami and we wound up getting him as a, uh, as a principal and then superintendent. And he kind of did a bang up job turning things around there for a yeah, while, so. He really did, he really did. So I think it's real valuable, but have you decided to go ahead with it and how are you gonna do it? Yeah, well, the first thing we have to do is get together with city council and, you know, do basically a, a SWOT analysis, some, you know, needs and needs assessment, things like that. But, you know, it's certainly not going to be as huge as Hamilton Township. And yes, they did finish it. And I do believe it's on their website. But um, it's just, you know, I have examples from the police department that I did and also the Egg Harbor City Lake. And it's just a matter of identifying goals, you know, that we want to accomplish and things like that. Um, but how will you engage the public? Well, the survey, remember we were talking about that. So basically it would have to be some sort of a survey with, um, you know, meetings, stakeholder meetings, try to the big part is identifying the stakeholders that you want to bring on board, you know, and, and picking their brain, if you will, like a brainstorming. And um, you just have to find out what's important to them. All right. All right. So do you have a timeline? Uh, is it going to happen this year, do you think? Yeah, I think within the next month or so, maybe okay. two months, we could start doing something with city council, okay. um, get together possibly in uh, maybe at six o'clock or something before the council meetings, something like that. I, I have to figure that out because you're not allowed to meet with the full council unless obviously you you advertise and it's an open meeting. So that could be a, that could be problematic, but um, I think it would I think it'll work. Okay. All right, cool. <clears throat> so unless anybody has any questions. Um, the only other the only other thing that I could add is that <clears throat> there were um, open ended one open ended question at the end that uh, a lot of people made comments on. I'm not going to go over all of them or things like that, but they were pretty much overall negative. And the the real thrust of it was the city stakeholders believe their taxes aren't being spent on things that they value. It's well, too those expensive. people don't know anything about the budget. Right. Because no, there's I know. not a penny that's spent on anything that's unnecessary. And it's yeah. too expensive to live in Egg Harbor. And 
basically the stakeholders felt like an administrator was not necessary and stakeholders are dissatisfied with their leadership. And I think that's why the council felt like they wanted to run the study again, but I can't, I mean, this is months and months of work. I mean, you just can't run the same study again. You ha it has to be more targeted towards what we're gonna do for the plan and not what people think about, you know, strategic planning anymore. It has to, it has to move on now. So there will be a survey um, and we will identify stakeholders and things like that. Now, prob the prop one problem is, is that the people that did take the survey were mainly um, white individuals, probably making, uh, let's see here, making 50 to $99,000 a year. Um, they had 50% of them had a bachelor's degree. So we're not getting a clear picture based on the demographics of the participants, we're not getting a clear picture of all the stakeholders because we have a very diverse community. So that's something that we're gonna have to actively seek out people to take, you know, to, to be engaged in the planning process. So that can be kind of tricky. Could, excuse me, could we possibly go to the churches? I mean, I know there's Latino masses and there's different, you know, type of, groups that get together I, and the um, African-American churches, maybe we can, you know, go that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. and it might be a quicker way to, or an easier way to reach out yeah. to the different populations or different yeah. communities. And we have people that say like Candace or maybe Aladia who have access to people that we don't have access to. And there's some, you know, friends that we all have that could access people that we necessarily couldn't access all the time, you know, and, you know, we have to depend on those people too, to help us to do that. So I think, I think we'll get to where we want to be. It's just that we do have to, you know, reach out and really get people involved. All right. Well, anything we could do, just let us know. Um, I wanted to move on to um, New Jersey Baggett. It is coming up shortly in May. I sent an email to the ACUA um, yesterday, I think, to see if they have more reusable bags that we could distribute. Um, but I, I also got, uh, Steve's on here, isn't he, Steve? Uh, I got an email from uh, Go Green Galloway and they talked about their Reduce, Reuse and Inspire grant that they got and what they're doing. And they had some discussion about uh, plastic products or alternatives to plastic products for the restaurants. And I thought that was really interesting. And maybe Steve and uh, Barb could talk about it a little bit and, and what you guys did. And, and maybe if Fake Harbor City restaurants could somehow be included in that, because we don't have that many. We have two, two rest, three. We don't have that many restaurants here. So can you talk about that a little bit, Steve? Yeah, the, uh, the grant that it just turns out to be timely for this, uh, it's uh, Reduce, Reuse, Inspire uh, started out with, um, we've got water stations, first soccer fields and the Patriot Lake and all that. But our last push is for the businesses, which is coming down to the wire. So Barbara and Mary Crawford and, um, and myself were looking into contacting suppliers to find out what they know or what their uh, plans are for the switch out in May because they've got to get up to speed now to you know get supply and, and all that. So we do have some irons in the fire um, with some folks to get samples. There are new products that are compliant. Those few companies, some are on board, some are kind of dismissive still at this point, which doesn't bode well for their business in the future. <laughs> um, so you want to, when we get our, our ducks in a row, as far as samples, I'll let you know, and let you take a look as well. And, and we'll see if it's something of interest to, to you guys to, to get involved with for your, not only your restaurants, but other places that need to have various types of uh, wear to use once this goes into effect. So um, that's pretty much it right now where our cake is not fully baked on that, but we hope to get some answers pretty soon. Barb can tell you a little bit about the, the state uh, thing she's been dealing with the state on this. Well, 
<clears throat> first of all, we originally were planning an in-person gathering of the businesses of <clears throat> Galloway and um, hoping to have a panel there that would answer all their questions about the upcoming law, the Plastic Pollution Reduction Act that takes effect May. And um, of course, we're not doing an in-person activity at this point. So we switched gears and we decided that we would make up toolkits for the businesses um, where they could see samples of what, what is acceptable come May and um, listings, literature about what the rules will be. So they're all clear on that. And then we're also going to offer them a Zoom. We've been working with the New Jersey Business Action Group and they are <clears throat> going to do a Zoom um, panel discussion for our businesses. And we'll probably hold that in the afternoon one day in between lunch and dinner hour so that more restaurants can participate and um, hope for the best. We, you know, we're just trying to, to let people know what, what's coming. And I don't think a lot of them are understanding of, of what the rules yeah. are gonna be. Right. Well, it's gonna come down to, uh, sorry, did, did you bring a bag, a, a reusable container with you? <laughs> if not, you can't take your doggy bag home. <laughs> that, well, that's that's, that'll get their attention. <laughs> that's been the overarching thing the whole time in this two year grant process is to inform not only the citizens, but the, the businesses that they take, take uh, reusable bags and even uh, something that they can uh, take away with takeout that the, the consumer can supply or right. even reusable wear. I mean, you can get crazy if you if you go the whole route, but it's not impossible to do and people get used to it in other countries and other places. So uh, you can, but the main thing is to comp for the businesses to comply with the the new act uh, in, in, it's already partially in effect, but the full vote will happen, will arrive in May and and we'll hopefully uh, be able to be better prepared in a, in a couple of weeks to uh, uh, spread these toolkits, as Barb says, but the kind of sample packs and information to our restaurants and uh, food service uh, suppliers. So we will get back to you on that. All right, great. That's oh, great. And then okay. you have another series of uh, coming up virtual presentations. Oh yes, if you if you don't if you could spread the link around to your team, that would be great. On starting on Thursday night, uh, the Friends Along the Malika, uh project is going to continue with um, our first of four monthly webinars um, on based on the film and uh, some really great speakers. Uh, we hope you can check it out and um, participate. It will also be uh, hopefully followed up by actionable events in the, well, even in the winter, but also in the spring. So um, we're looking forward to it. Uh, Thursday night at seven o'clock Zoom, if you could spread the link and the, that little flyer I sent you, Nanette. Yeah, I got it here. I don't know if you could see it. I okay. posted it on our, um, our um, Facebook page. Good. Look forward to seeing anybody I there. I emailed it to everyone too, to just to let Great. them know about it. Great. You posted it on the Sustainable EHC Facebook, you said? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll forward it and share it on the city page too. Or did and, you already do that? Yeah. And then the other thing that's coming up is the garden series from Rutgers uh, Garden Education Series starts February 9th, goes through May 25th. And it's about gardening. Uh, there is a cost to this. Uh, it's two hundred dollars expensive, but I'm sure a lot of the gardeners and horticulturists. Oh, that's that's the uh, master gardeners uh, from uh, Belinda Chester. Yeah, she asked asked us to put it up on our Go Green Galloway site. Uh, yes, that does entail a cost, but it's I think it, it's not clear whether that gets you to master gardener status, but it gets you darn close. I think. <laughs> It's, it's a 25 training. online classes, yeah. five webinars pre-recorded, and weekly online discussions with our like Rutgers Cooperative Extension Horticulturist. Yes. So, um, I, I, we have a garden club, right? So maybe that they would be interested in that. And oh, here's the estimate I found. It. I'll I'll post it on the the Ake Harbor City Garden Club website. 
Yeah, so um, I think this is on our page too. This is on our, our sustainable EHC Facebook page too. Okay. So you can pick it up from there. Okay, great. Uh, I don't have anything else on this list. Uh, anyone else have anything they wanna bring up at this time? Maybe I could have a word or two or three or yeah. four. Um, I learned about something new last week that might be of interest to us. You know, I've been interested in community solar and mm -hmm. interested in the process by which you get permission to do that through the Board of Public Utilities, which has stopped its proceeding procedure. Of, it wanted to have three years of test cases. It's now opened the door to any reasonable project as long as it involves uh, service to minority or low and middle and, and, and moderate income families. Um, a new thing that's called community solar, this in my opinion, community solar, is an organization, a big company called Neighborhood Sun, which has, has got a contract with PSE&G to service Burlington, Mercer and Camden counties. It's built one solar field, one huge solar field in Mercer County, and it offers any low or moderate or even non-low or moderate income family in any of those counties to buy into a program which brings you a 10% discount on the generation, on a portion of the generation charge of your electric bill as it comes from PSE&G um, if you buy into them. And buying into them means agreeing for 20 years to um, have your history of electrical charges analyzed by their people to make a decision as to what percentage you are entitled to of, of the generation charge to have the 10% discount on, not all of it. And it means that you save, in the, in the experience of a person, I, a friend of mine who's done it, somewhere between two and $10 per month on your electric bill. Whereas I think the company is making millions. Um, it's a for-profit company. Uh, the, the new feature of it is that it goes over a wide area and doesn't involve a single local solar field. Um, what I think might be of interest to us is using something of the same concept, but locally and hopefully managed by the ACOA if we could get Rick Dovey interested in it. So it could be offered to everybody just in Egg Harbor City and to use the feature of it that allows you not to have to have a smart meter or to have to deal with the, the details of how each month your bill might have to be adjusted. This is an automatic kind of mechanism that's all fixed in advance. And I think if there was no profit involved in it, it could be a much greater than 10 or 20 percent reduction in your electric bill. It could be more like 30, 40, 50 or 60 percent reduction. Um, as long as we find someone who's like Rick Dovey, who's willing to take it on as and, and to have it um, approved by the Board of Public Utilities, all the solar projects that are of any size, except for a private home, of course, have to go through the Board of Public Utilities. And it has to have a feature that is specific to low and moderate income families, which in this case is just having a larger percentage up front being um, taken off of your bill. Um, but I, I'd love to see something like this wider area concept brought into Egg Harbor City. And as Steve Fiedler has suggested, uh, use the 20 to 40 acres of vacant property at the Mullica end of the railroad bordered section of Egg Harbor City for a large solar farm that would be then able to be taken connected to the substation that is right nearby uh, that Atlantic Electric operates. It's not clear to me that Atlantic Electric would be willing to go along with this. They've resisted every other solar um, electric solar farm in, in, in their territory. But I, I think they are gradually weakening and Rick is working at them to try to get his Pleasantville project approved, which still doesn't, they still haven't allowed to take place. Um, but if, if we could get that out of Atlantic Electric and get it to a non-profit making company so that the benefits could be passed along to the consumers rather than to a, a, a large money-making company, 
Um, I would love to see that kind of approach in Egg Harbor City. We already have the benefit of being designated a low income people or minority community. So that might help us get it through the Board of Public Utilities. I'm sorry, Rick isn't here tonight to, to yeah, be able to respond to this, but I would love to sort of put it to him if we could do that. All right, well, maybe he could uh, talk about that at our next meeting, we'll put, we'll all email him. Or I will send it to him separately and hope that he can have a response to us at the next yeah. meeting. Do that, I mean, I just copy okay, me I will. Going Thank what's you. going on. And, um, we did talk about doing community solar. Um, I think even Ryan had talked about the solar field that's going to be at the uh, train station. And um, I don't remember what ever came of it, but I think we're, this would be an ideal community to have a community solar project, mainly because all the residents are qualified to yes. participate. You know, Not quite great. all, but most. Well, most most people who live here are just barely making middle class, <laughs> you know, uh, we're struggling. So, um, and we have a lot of seniors who would benefit and a lot of, um, you know, renters who would benefit and so forth. So, and there's a lot of money coming down the road for this kind of things in, in the next couple of years with the um, um, infrastructure plan. So, it's good to be talking about this stuff and trying to figure out how to get it done and now. So thanks for that. Any, okay. Anyone else? No? No, anybody else? No? Okay. Well, I don't have anything else to blab about. So um, I could sign off now and, and ask that we adjourn. Okay. Thank you. Thank you everyone for coming and um, I might be calling on you for some help uh, in the next couple of weeks about the uh, tree grants and so forth. So hang in there. All right. Good night, everyone. Take Thank care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.